Good evening. This evening, as we go about our normal football business, we come before you standing united as an organization, as a football team, as football men. From different ethnicities, social economic backgrounds, and even countries of origin. We stand united by our talents and our love for the game of football. That love and those talents have taught us great tolerance and understanding. We realize that those blessings put us in the minority. We've learned a lot of lessons in 2020, be it from the pandemic or the social unrest. The big perspective that has provided us is regardless of how big and important this game is for us, is small in the big scheme of things. But we also realize that we're privileged to have a platform. But that privilege does not shield us from sadness. That privilege does not shield us from shock or outrage. It does not shield us from fear. Fear for our safety or our loved ones or an uncertain future. Beyond being football men, first and foremost, we're husbands, fathers, brothers, sons, uncles, members of a community. And we wanted to pause and to share with those that are hurting tonight that we see you, that we hear you, but most importantly, we stand with you. Now we take a moment to come together in the middle of the field as a group of men and pray for betterment. Hey, you know what time it is? In the city of champions. Go right, go right. And he's gonna get sacked. Let's go! Touchdown, Steelers! The standard is the standard. We've all had our fair share of twists and turns so far in 2020. Being able to pivot at a moment's notice has been crucial for the Steelers players, coaches and staff. The process of training camp has not been as clear cut as previous years, but as the team moves forward through the gradual ramp up period, the first day in pads has everyone's level of excitement reaching new heights. Well, the first day of pads is always that great feeling. You know, we, we're just big kids out here playing the game, so when we throw pads on, you know, it takes us back to that first day. It always means, means more than, you know, when we're just in helmets or without helmets. So, you know, that just lets us know, you know, we're still playing football, you know, thankfully during this time right now. So it's fun and it'll never get old. But before the hitting can begin, it's important to make sure all of the right equipment is in place. After hours of preparation, the field is set and primed for action.
The work doesn't stop when the players leave the field. Those competitive juices flow right into the weight room, where some days you can find James Conner and Minka Fitzpatrick battling it out on the rowing machine. This is called greatness on the rower. 30 versus 39, 250 meters. We ain't gonna get you out of detail. He don't got it. He don't got it. Oh, he died. Ah. Oh, he almost got it. Woo! 40.1. 40.1. My about to chase him down in the open field right now. He got 39.9, I got 40.1. So Minka won the first one by 0.2 seconds. Having a workout buddy can help push you to another level. And when players were quarantined this past offseason, Connor had a fellow 2017 draft class member at his side. Yeah, put in a lot of work this offseason. Uh, early on in the quarantine, me and Juju were getting after it together. You know, we were both in the city still, uh, in Pittsburgh. And so uh, we just, like, you know, we're here. We might as well make the most of this. And so it was nice to grind together. You know, we, we came in together so fresh to just work hard and work out together. You know, made our relationship a little bit stronger. And then I took a trip down to uh, Georgia where my brother lives. He lives in Georgia and he has some logs. And we were doing something similar to a med ball toss using logs instead. So, you know, I was just trying to make, make it work with whatever I had. And so I really was just trying to stay busy, you know, invested in me a lot this off season and working with but as Chef Aaron saying, he's been a huge help, you know, with my nutrition part of things. I'm just trying to keep stacking good days and, and just keep getting working and, and be prepared, you know, as best as possible for this upcoming season. Being physically in shape is just one part of preparing for an NFL season. The team, unit, and group meetings also play a huge role in mentally preparing the players to take the field. All right, man, shoot, let's get to work. First thing, all right, thought of the day, all right? Poor leaders heed advice from those that tell them what they want to hear. Strong leaders can keep it real with themselves, invite constructive criticism, and stay out of their emotions. Measure your performance against your own strengths and not someone else's. But that's what Coach Thomas is always talking about when he's saying seeking comfort. Leaders like people who seek advice from somebody who's going to tell them what they want to hear, they seek in comfort. They want to be comfortable. They just want to be right. Some ego involved in that. But people who are seeking constructive criticism, want to be told that what they need to do better, those are the ones who are going to be, they're the ones you want to put yourselves around. Man, that's something you can apply to, to more than just football. That's something you can apply to life. All right? 
So, and I can tell you just from a professional standpoint in this room, I've said it to y'all a number of times, I'm only in it to help you. I want everybody to get put on. I want everybody to have all the things that they want to out of this, all right? My job is to coach the mess out of each and every one of you. I want all of y'all to be successful. Man, he's just been real consistent with us, been preaching the same message. You know, he, he's on us every day about, you know, ball security and everything we need to do just to maximize our potential as football players. It's been a huge help. Y'all know we're not going to move forward with football until we get to um, talk about ball security. It's on our mind. And if it's on your mind, you're going to make it important. And so as I look at it, all right, I see a bunch of the same different positions doing their thing, and I'll just scan through it. But you see JC right there, double arm wrapping the ball. All right. High and tight right there with Ant. It's just some really good things on tape. There's one down here a little bit lower, even going down. All right, as you're going down, keeping the ball tight to your body. But it, it's something that needs to be talked about because, as we know, man, one turnover can be the difference between playoffs and, and not. We'll have a ball security. Um, we we'll put the ball in the left arm and jump cut and spin, work that cycle like we did before. Oh, he's brought his own little twist to things and his, some of the drills that he's known work for him in the past, he's brought it to us. So we've been working a lot with our pass catching ability, pass protection, ball security, just checking every box that we need to being running backs and uh, making this offense go. Catching, I'm not sleep. Routes, we've got to tighten that up still. But I'm definitely not sleeping on the hands. Part of the route I got to tighten up. Which route? Which one? Just the, knowledge, just the, the overall knowledge you want, you of want understanding. Stack, I'm on my sleeve, so I can get my footwork a little bit better. That's all. No, nah, I think you got your footwork. You got all that. So it's just, the, it's what, just, what it's just the not, spacing, alignment. You know, playing off of the man. If I'm supposed to be between the numbers and the hash, understanding where I'm at on the field as I release and getting back to my landmark. Clean it up. Just clean it up. All right. All right, here we go. Say hey. Oh, guy up. Next guy, just go. Next guy, just go. Next guy, just go. Ooh. Yep, everybody through. Go. Let's go. There you go. Much better. Good. Good pocket. Good pocket. Get that alignment right every time, man. Them details are what matters now. Pull with that underneath arm. Pull it now. Pull it. Pull with the underneath arm. Pull it. Pull it. Pull it. There we go. Oh, 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 oh. Good. Get in the hole, get out. Keep the ball high and tight. Good. Hey, I like that leg pulling up, Benny. Ball should be in your right arm. All right. Good. 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 All right, good. Blue, 18, say hit. Good. All right, we good? Man, I just feel like our standard is being raised, you know. Uh, I gotta take charge of that, and I'm just trying to lead by example. It's been awesome to see, you know, the improvement that the guys are making, and it's something gonna help us. You know, those guys contribute big, you know, on offense, also on special teams. So to see Benny, you know, dedicate himself to, to doing what he wants to do with his body, and Jalen just keep sharpening his skills in the past game. Um, everybody's just, you know, playing off of each other, and, and we're all motivating each other and working hard. Steelers fans are familiar with Connor, Samuels, and Snell, but some new additions to the running backs group are bringing a whole lot of hype. Man, I was excited. I see, I seen the speed that Anthony had. Um, you know, I seen some highlights for him versus Ohio State. He's, you know, going a distance 60, 70 plus yards. So, um, man, we need depth, and so that's how we win ball games. Good, Ant. Here we go. Next rep. When I seen the speed that Anthony had and, and his take, I was excited. Adding speed is always good, but in football, you also need power. And it's easy to feel energized when your new teammate's last name is Watt. Their whole family, obviously their name speaks for itself. So, you know, and now I got one blocking for me. So I'm excited. I seen Derek's tape. Man, he's a beast. And I'm just excited to get behind him and, and just have him clear the way. He's gonna make our jobs in the running back room a lot easier from, from his talents. Hey, hey, let's get good work in today, man. It's, it's not gonna be physical. It's gonna be more mental than anything, all right? Let's lock in. Savages only on three. One, two, three. Savages only. Like Coach Faulkner says, ball security can be the difference in making the playoffs or watching them from home. And what better way to put it to the test than by simulating the process of what a home game at Heinz Field is like for the Steelers. And we're getting a look at the Steelers going through an actual game day situation. TJ! Yeah, TJ! Woo! Let me get <laughs> for us.
us to simulate a game-like environment. We, we approached it in that way in terms of our, our pre-practice work, the stretch routines and all the things that we would do uh, in a preseason game. is just another step that we're taking to ready the group. And I don't want it to be where we're in New York and, and that's the first time they're finding their rhythms prior to kickoff. And so, you know, we're doing some things that we would normally do in preseason-like settings. We're just attaching it to the front end of a practice. Once the practice actually got started, it was a normal practice that we did. And for some of the players, it was their first time stepping on the field in a game day uniform. It was definitely pretty cool, especially seeing everyone else wearing their uniforms. And, you know, it was like kind of set in on like the fact that, you know, we're actually doing this and we're two weeks away from, from playing a game. So it was a super cool experience for sure. While the offense got to show out in their home uniforms for the first night practice, it's been the defense that's been stealing the show. Fitzpatrick says the only time the offense makes a play is when the defense screws up. Watts said they're making life miserable for you guys. Who's winning 11 on 11? Defense. Defensively, we're flying around. We're having a lot of fun. Uh, this is the fastest we've ever been. Uh, we have the secondary can, can clamp down guys, but they can also tackle. I think that's something that is very undervalued from, from our guys is they, they can tackle. The front guys are going to get after the, the run. We're going to get after the passer, and uh, the guys can blitz inside, and we can also cover. So I think we're a very well-rounded defense. Uh, we all expect us to make plays, and if we see a guy not making a play or not giving his all on, on, a, on a given play, we, we're not afraid to say it. We all have accountability. Uh, we all hang out uh, in the locker room. You see the spike ball tournament and all that stuff. It's just to keep building the communication, the camaraderie between um, the D-line, the DBs, guys that don't necessarily talk a ton on the field to each other, but we know that we can uh, account for everybody once it comes to game time. Do you and Bud set any kind of individual goals for each other? And in what ways do you kind of push each other? I want to be able to be a game wrecker. I want to be able to be somebody that the other team has to scheme around. And I know that the same goes for Bud as well. And I think being a game wrecker is just somebody that can make a play on any given down. Um, that's what I love about playing defense, playing outside linebacker in this system, is having the opportunity to affect every single snap. And uh, that's something that not every position can say. Uh, but I truly believe that uh, whether I'm making the tackle or not, or batting a pass down, or getting a quarterback sack or a quarterback curry, I truly feel like I can impact the game um, on every single play. And it's just a matter of taking that to fruition and making teams game plan around uh, that specific game record. On defense, being a game wrecker starts with how quickly you can get off the snap of the football, something the defensive line and linebackers practice daily. Since my rookie year, I remember first coming to practice and we did the get off to him. I think I took last every time. And uh, I just remember how bad that felt to be a first round draft pick. And I had a lot of high expectations for myself and to not win a stinking get off drill was very embarrassing for me. Um, so ever since then, I've kind of taken great pride in trying to be the first or second in this series of videos, I'm winning every single one of them. I think Bud would have something different to say, but maybe if Bud was wearing a helmet, he'd be closer. But Devin and Vince always are trying to steal a nugget off of me and uh, Bud, who are primarily pass rushers, so they're always trying to um, steal some sort of move and we're always willing to teach them. And I think we're just trying to grow our repertoire. We're always getting better. Trying to do muscle memory is the biggest thing, especially this is from early in training camp. Um, I, I'm, I do a lot of these drills at home in the off season, but once you get back around uh, the team during the special teams period, trying to do as much muscle memory as possible. Because when the time comes in the game, you don't really have time to process and think. It's just all reactionary and uh, letting your muscle memory take over. And that's exactly what I'm trying to accomplish here. So these are, I just like to work with Denzel, our outside linebacker assistant. And get him behind a bag. I, I like to have the coach behind the bag so it's as game-like as possible with having some resistance like an offensive lineman. Um, he sticks that crayon, we call it the crayon uh, bag that he holds in his right arm and uh, just trying to visualize as much as possible 
without getting actual in-game reps and wearing on the body. With no preseason games this year, Coach Tomlin also wanted the team to go through a mock road game simulation. And there was no way some inclement weather was going to stop the team's second night practice during camp. We chose tonight as an opportunity to give us a mock game, if you will, in the road venue. Uh, we were visiting team. We came through the visiting tunnel. It was a good atmosphere to get better. After practice, Coach Tomlin doubled down on the team's commitment to not just making a statement, but taking actions. We meet routinely with, with the Social Justice Committee. We thought the scrimmage was an opportunity to make a statement. We felt like a statement was needed. Um, given the platform, although it was a small one, uh, we thought it was very necessary that we make the statement that we made. I was chosen to represent the thoughts and feelings uh, of the men, and I, and I did so humbly. We're committed to taking action and being a part of the solution to face social injustice and prejudice that we all face, not only in our country, but worldwide. It is our desire to be active participants in the formation of a more perfect union. That being said, we realize recent events are the continued reminder how far we are from that. And we thought that there was nobody better than Coach Mike Tomlin to deliver that because of who he is in the NFL and who he is as a person. And uh, that's what we decided to do. We decided to come together, lock arms, and make a stand and show compassion because even though that we may be in the NFL and that we're professional athletes, you know, we're still very sympathetic to everything going on and we still feel that. We can't be blind uh, to what's going on. Uh, we've seen too many injustices to be silent. We've come together over this off season to make committees to move forward. We understand we have to invest in our community. We understand we have to invest in our children. Um, and through these opportunities, those, those are the ways we can make change. Community and police forums and criminal justice forums and education and community investment as well. You know, our voter engagement um, in helping voter suppression and getting rid of that. So this is uh, our mandatory voter education training. Um, we partnered with Rock the Vote, making sure you guys have information on the history of voting rights. We worked with some of you to fill out the survey to make sure that you were all registered to vote. Ready? Whenever you're ready, go ahead. Hey, Stella Nation. This year, I'm voting by mail. It's easy, safe, and secure. We all have the opportunity to make a difference in this world, and uh, it's your chance to go to the voting polls and make a difference. I look at my kids and they look up to me as being their daddy. Um, and I want to set a great example for them that every voice, no matter what you look like, what color of your skin, um, that is your right and nobody can take it away from you. Because voting is the only way that we're going to go ahead and collectively get real change in our world. Get out and vote. The Steelers are continuing to take action both on and off the field as they prepare for an NFL season that will be very different than what they're used to. Their regular season journey starts next Monday against the New York Giants. As the team moves back to the UPMC Rooney Sports Complex, they do so knowing they've completed the required work throughout training camp and are ready to chase their ultimate goal, a Super Bowl championship. That is, after all, the standard.